Right, grade 12 learners, we are back, we are back. Section B, here we go. So we're busy with 2024 and 2025, let's go. Oh, I see it, I see it. And this question I marked last year. <laughs> I marked this specific one. So section B's got question three. And let's see here, uh, question three. Question four. Question five and six and seven. Okay, so four through seven. And I'll give you some tips as we go through. So let's jump into it. Right, so <clears throat> question number three, system technologies. Now this is something that comes up every single time. You're going to get a question like this where they are going to give you a picture of the hardware device they are going to ask you to name it and indicate what it does. Okay, please. I'm telling you this because it comes in. If you look at the supplementary over here, you're going to see exactly the same thing with question three. Aha, there we go. Oh, haven't seen this one for a while. Okay, <laughs> that's nice. So let's have a look at these. What is this? That is my, that is my simple question. Like, what is that device? I mean, that is a hardware component, correct? Yes, it is. So what does that do? Now, we've had some weird answers in the past. Um, last year, sure, there was a lot of different... <laughs> some people said even the CPU or aircon, things like that. No, people. This is a power supply unit. A power supply unit. Okay, so with this plug over here, we're getting our power from old ESCOM. They give us power. We've got fans in here to obviously keep this cool, but also then to provide power through these cables to the various components in the PC. This one giving power to the motherboard itself. So this is a power supply. End of story, right? That's all you need to say. Um, <clears throat> we would want you to give us the full name. And you can do two things here. You can say power supply unit. You could say the power supply. You could also say the PSU. Because some, some said UPS. PSU, uh, PSU is fine. Uh, UPS, SUP, uh, just a PSU or a power supply. Next one. What is this? What is this? This is a wireless headset microphone. Here's your microphone. But it's wireless and this shows you it's a headset so a wireless headset microphone next one what icon is that name the application that is from microsoft paint or you can say the paint application or the paint program and this one you should know is your recycle bin okay now yeah were they asking what it is no they were looking for its main function so what does it do Please, people, understand this. This is a temporary storage location for files that have been deleted. I'm going to say it again. A temporary storage location for files that have been deleted. Why temporary? Can I restore files that have been deleted here? Yes, I can. So if I want to delete something, it's going to go here. And until I delete it here, I can still go and recover it. Okay? So any answer around that. Then, what is this? What is this? Yeah, it says main function and connectivity method. Now, the connectivity method, we can see that's wireless right here. But what connectivity method? Which wireless method? It's going to be Bluetooth. So we already know this is a speaker, connects via Bluetooth. Therefore, we're talking about a Bluetooth speaker. Now, if they're asking what does it do, what is its main function? Well, it brings sound out of the PC. That's it. It's all you have to do for two marks. It's a speaker that brings sound out of the PC and connects wirelessly via Bluetooth to the computer. That's all you needed to say. Okay. Next one. Um, okay, I'll finish question three. Software is an important part of the computer. In many cases, when trying to install software like Office, like an Office suite, it requires a product key. This question has come up before. What is a product 
key. What is that? It's simply a code assigned to the software, or you can say it's an alphanumeric code or series of characters that you type in to verify that you're the owner of that product to unlock its ability to actually work. Okay. 3.2.2 give one reason why software developers would use a product key. Now, what did we just say? It prevents the software from being used by people who haven't paid for it. It prevents, in other words, software piracy. It ensures that only the person that's paid for it can use it. Right? Any of those. <clears throat> now, we had a lot of these in the paper. Reasons, advantages, disadvantages, all of that. Most portable computers are manufactured without optical drives. Now, what is an optical drive? There's an optical drive. CD, um, ROM, CD drive, DVD drive. Those are... So, please, those drives, that's your optical drive. The CD or DVD itself is the optical media. CD, DVDs, Blu-rays, any of them. Okay. Now that we have that in mind. Give two reasons why most portable computers, in other words, your laptops, are increasingly being designed not to include the optical drive. Folks, look at that. Look at the size of that. Why would you not want that in a laptop? Um, because it's too bulky. Because instead of me saving things to a CD, I can now save them to a flash drive. So these drives have been replaced by flash drives, external hard drives, I can save um, into the cloud as well. All, all of these things. So any of those reasons would have sufficed there. Okay. Next one. Uh, motivate. Motivate. By replacing, or oh, sorry, why replacing the hard drive could improve the performance of a computer. And I want to be very, very clear with this one. So I want to improve the performance of my PC. And I feel that Replacing the hard drive would do so. I would be replacing the hard drive for maybe one of two reasons. Number one, I'm replacing it with a larger hard drive, which means there's going to be more free space. That is going to help if I have more free space on my computer, because if I have less free space, the PC does tend to, st to slow down. So a larger cap uh, capacity drive can prevent the PC from slowing down. Yes, you can say that. What else? Let's look at the fact that most of my, my old hard drives are traditional hard disk drives and not SSDs. So if I'm replacing my traditional hard disk drive with, and I'm upgrading it to an SSD, is that going to improve the performance? Yes, but you can't just say that. You will have to say that me upgrading the traditional hard drive to an SSD will improve the performance. How? Due to the SSD's faster data access speeds. Folks, when you look at your memo, I want you to see this because this is very important. It is very, very important that you know this. There's the word in upgrading to your solid state drive from traditional hard disk can improve, significantly improve the overall responsiveness. How does it do that? Due to the SSD's faster data access speeds. So I want you to make sure that when you answer your questions, you answer them like that, right? Because if you just say it's faster, can't give you a mark. More space, can't give you a mark. You've got to explain what you are saying, right? They don't accept those, now that's one word things anymore. All hardware items on a computer inventory have been barcoded. Give one benefit of using a barcode system. Well, it's just more accurate when you capture the code and um, good and efficient stock control, right? Those are just the basics. Provide two reasons, 3.6, why someone would rather replace a computer than upgrading it. Why would someone rather replace a computer than upgrading it? Now just think, maybe some of the, the tech is outdated. Maybe what they want to um, pop into the PC is not compatible with the hardware they have. 
maybe the computer is more than, and I, this is why I said outdated, more than like, you know, six, seven, eight years old. Uh, maybe the price of the components to replace or to, to upgrade is close to the price of just buying a new one and just replacing it. So those are all different reasons why. Right, next one. 3.7 computers are used to create documents that need to be printed from time to time. Andrew wants to print advertising material for his company. He has the option of using either an inkjet printer or laser. The following statements about printers are given. Can printing color. Well, that already tells me it's inkjet. Uses a charged drum to create the printed item. That's laser. Uses powdered toner. That's laser. Creates output line by line using a printhead. That is an inkjet. So they just wanted you to indicate then um, if that was inkjet or laser. Then they go further. They want you to match the statements that was used over here by writing down the statement number in the space provided. One statement may be used for both. So obviously we've already done that. 3.7.2, Andrew intends to print 10,000 copies of a single page A4 leaflet. State whether he should use inkjet or laser. Well, he'll, he'll be an absolute nutcase if he's using uh, an inkjet to print 10,000 copies. The amount of ink he's going to use. So we use a laser. Remember, it's able to give us more copies. 3.7.3, when he wants to make small-scale 3D models of a company logo. What's he going to use? He's going to use a 3D printer, but he doesn't understand the employer, doesn't understand how the 3D printer works. Please, folks, get this right. Get this right. How does a 3D printer work? This process works by laying down or printing through a hot nozzle. Because remember, the print head is now a hot nozzle. And what does it do? It takes that filament, pulls it through the hot nozzle, and it melts that uh, filament onto the bed layer by layer. You must get that layer by layer is very important. The fact that it uses filament, the fact that it's got a hot nozzle, and that hot nozzle allows that filament to be printed layer by layer onto the bed. In 3.8, what type of software does the picture refer to? What type of software? It's this one open source software, and this is proprietary software, right? We, we This is free, this we buy. But both of them are what? Both of them are operating systems. So what type of software are we talking about? System software. Then they want us to explain two differences between the software in the image. What's one of the differences between the two? I already mentioned it. One is free, it's open source. So you must say open source and free. And the other one is paid. So that's one difference. What's the next one? Well, Linux has a vast array of open source software, whereas Windows has a broader range of commercial software. You could also indicate that Linux has machine-friendly features, um, but the main thing is that users must still learn to use Linux whereas Windows uses a GUI, a graphical user interface, and you know people can get into that without much tech knowledge. So any of those differences you'd be able to put there, and that's question three.